Today I'm putting together a basic bare bones emergency radio communications kit. This will be perfect to keep in your car or your house and it's cheap and it's effective and it's just a really good idea to have one of these on hand just in case. Now I'm putting this kit together for my mom because she recently expressed interest in having a little bit more robust emergency communications uh, capability. I think that the importance of radio communications has really been showcased this year, especially with instances like we saw in Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton on the East Coast, where we saw large scale breakdowns of the electrical and communications infrastructure. And a lot of the communications that went on were through radio, probably with the exact kind of radio that I'm going to be showing you today. Now, if you're a radio operator, this is not going to be any new news to you. This is all gear that you've seen before, but for people that are a little bit less in the know, this is just a, a cheap, effective way to communicate in a disaster. So I'm going to be going through the components of this kit kind of in order of importance in my mind. And yeah, it'll fit together in a little, basically like a pencil case. Uh, I'll put links to all the stuff in the description so you can pick up the components for yourself if you want to build one of these kits. I personally used basically the exact same radio and kit that I'm going to be showing to you today when we had this kind of weird freak tsunami warning on the west coast here in California. I was able to get updates on this tsunami uh, seconds if not minutes before these updates were broadcast on the local news or on the internet. So it really is an effective way to get information quickly and when it matters. So let's jump into it. All right, let's start with the radio. For you radio guys, again, this is gonna look very familiar. This is a Baofeng radio, it's a Chinese radio. You know, these kind of people throw shade on these radios a lot for some reason, but they work. The model that I'm gonna be putting in this kit is the BF-F8HP. It is essentially the slightly better version of the UV-5R here. The BF-F8HP has an eight watt transmitting power, so it's a little bit, uh, can pump out a little bit more power when you're actually talking on it. I'll jump into the kit here and show you everything that it comes with. So there's the radio. It's got one battery and then it's got all the goodies that comes with it. So it's got a charger. I think it's got a microphone and a like little hearing earbud thing and a clip for like your shirt or your jacket or whatever. And of course it comes with a charger. So to me, I think that the biggest weak point of this radio is actually this right here. It's the charger. I mean, if you guys are anything like me, this is probably the first thing that you're gonna lose. So the first most important component of this emergency kit, I think is a more robust battery system. And there's, there's gonna be a couple pieces here. So this is a uh, battery that fits on the back of the radio, but it runs AA batteries. So it runs five AA batteries. You know, if you're listening all day and maybe doing some transmitting, this will may maybe last you a day or two days at best. But if you're conservative with the battery, it'll last a lot longer. Most likely these emergency kits that you're building are gonna sit in the back of a car or in the home for years on end before anybody uses them. The battery's gonna be dead by the time they get to it. And if the electricity is off, having one of these AA packs is gonna be a lifesaver. As an aside of that, um, extra batteries. So this is a 10 pack of AA batteries. 
this will get you two uses on the AA battery pack. So these two things are the first things that are going into the emergency kit. The next thing, surprise, is another battery, but it's not like the factory battery. This one actually has a USB-C port. So if the power is on, you can charge your radio batteries with like your normal cell phone charger. I have two of these batteries. I'm gonna throw at least one of them into the kit. And if there's room, I'll throw two. The next thing that I'm gonna include in the, in the kit is a better antenna. Now the kit comes with a little factory antenna here. And there's nothing wrong with these antennas. They work fine, but the bigger ones work a little bit better. The cool thing about this antenna is you can fold it up so it doesn't take up a lot of space to store it. So this will fit in that little pouch nice. It comes with a little strap to keep it from doing this. The other thing is, is I bought an antenna that's got a B and C connector. So the the connector that comes factory on this radio, I'm just gonna use mine as an example here. This is what it looks like. I believe it's called an SMA connector and it screws in. And this is one of the weak points of the radio is these SMA connectors. Uh, because if you torque on it too hard, you know, you can kind of mess this thing up. They're kind of delicate. So, they sell these little adapters, which are SMA to BNC. So this screws in. The BNC connector is basically like a twist lock, kind of twist lock, sort of cam lock thing. And they're more robust, and you're less likely to damage the actual antenna portion of the radio. The next thing that I'm going to put in the kit is just a little write in the rain book because you never know when you're actually going to want to write data down. So throwing a write in the rain book, which this is like waterproof paper, I'll throw this and a pen in there and you'll just have it on hand and available to write anything down. And then the final thing that I'm going to put in there is this is a document that I found online and it is called the SHTF Survivalist Radio Frequency List. This has like all of the, the most important and pertinent frequencies that you should have on the radio. You just gotta look through it. This, this has got everything that you would potentially need in a disaster and it'll be all right there in the kit. And then finally is just a little case to put it all in. So this is just a pencil case that I found on Amazon. I'll pack all the components in here and show you what it looks like. We've got the radio, this foldable antenna, got your right in the rain book, your emergency frequency list, got your AA batteries here, your AA battery holder, the other USB-C battery, another USB-C battery, I'm probably not even going to include the factory charger in there, again, for the reasons that I already said. But yeah, all of those components that I just talked about are right there. And this is easy, packable, and it's, it's affordable. If you have the money to get one of these, you should just do it. And if you have the money to get it for your loved ones and your family and your friends, you should do it. Let's get into a little bit of the nitty gritty on the legality of this. Most of the bands that you can communicate on on this radio are amateur radio frequency bands. And that means that you technically need a license to press this button right here and talk. You don't need a license to listen. The exception is in times of disaster or emergency, that rule kind of goes out the door. And if you have problems, you can use these radios to talk and communicate. I mean, the, the FCC is the governing body on these, these frequencies and they're not gonna come knocking if you use this thing. 
especially if it's in a disaster. So I'm a ham radio operator. I'm not a regulator. I don't care if you guys want to use these things. A lot of people do. This is like one of the most common radios on the market and people are using them like crazy that don't have licenses. But I feel like it was worth mentioning just because it's worth mentioning. One last note is don't just put these components together into a kit and throw them at somebody because it's just going to be dead weight. Take 30 minutes to look up how to program these radios online and put in the most pertinent frequencies that you're going to need. Off the top of my head, those would be your local disaster nets. They're called Aries or Racy's nets. Those will be on whatever freq local frequencies. You can look them up for your, your area. Other important frequencies would be police and fire. Again, look up your local frequencies. NOAA weather radio, which they've got a, a set of frequencies. I think they might even be in this, in this disaster communications uh, paperwork that I put in here. For my mom in particular, who I'm gonna give this kit to, I'm also gonna program in the uh, marine channels, which you do not need a license to transmit on. She lives on the coast, so, you know, channel 68, channel 16, the normal ones, the important ones. But take the time to to program this thing and, and tailor it to the person that you're going to give it to or to yourself. I'm probably actually going to build one of these kits for myself because you're, you're in my van right now. You guys... If you've been following the channel, you've probably seen it in the background. You've probably never seen the inside of it. It's really messy right now. But I have a ham radio here that I use all the time. And there are often instances when I'm on trips with my family or with my girlfriend, and I will want to go off on a hike or go do some crazy stuff that they do not want to. So if I have this kit, sitting in the back of my truck I can set this thing up take it with me make sure that the frequencies are talking to each other and I can have basically communications back to my base station here one other important thing to talk about that I forgot is if you want to order these components now is a good time to do it because I don't know what the deal is with the tariffs if or when those are going to happen but the price of all of this Chinese hardware that we're talking about uh, is likely to go up. So now is a good time to, to buy these parts. I hope this was a helpful video to somebody out there. I know there's probably a few others, th few other videos out there like it, but the more of this information that we can get out into the public and keep people prepared, the better. And just a shameless plug for getting your ham radio license. It's not hard, do it. One other component that I, this is just like in my personal radio kit. If you wanted to shell out another 30 or 40 bucks for this antenna, this is called an Ed Fong antenna. Um, I think it's a DBJ2. It uses that same BNC connector and it's just a wire antenna. You can hang it up anywhere and this will increase the ability of your radio quite a bit. So if you wanted to shell out a little bit more money, this would be an awesome thing to include in that kit. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Again, I hope this was helpful and stay connected, stay prepared, and we'll catch you in the next video. All right, see ya.